Hi there, I'm Chris Berman. Up next on ESPN, they're all set for football where they know all and tell all at All Tell Stadium in Jacksonville. Standing by, Dan Stevens, Peter O'Keefe, Susie Colbert. Looks as if they've got a real good one on their hands. Chicago Bears, Jacksonville Jaguars. This ought to be good. No good. Leftwich puts his arm into this one. And is Taylor gets the call again. Grossman throws a beauty to the right side. Grossman throws a bullet and is complete at the 45. Grossman throws a heater right side. Taylor gets the handoff and passes the left. Third down, three wideouts in the game. Taylor will get the carry on third down. That will end the first quarter, and it's still a scoreless game. Smith grabs the rope right side and fits into a third and short situation. This is a critical play for this drive. Yeah, now, Dan, they can just fall forward and make the play. Sounds easy, Peter, but we'll see if they can pull it off. Ten, touchdown! Look at this run, Dan. Everything worked out to perfection. Look at the fluidity of the running style. There's no wasted motion there. What a play. That's the first time he's seen the end zone, and you know it was going to happen sooner or later. Well, he expects this one, which starts at their own 27-yard line. Grant makes a play on this. Douglas sack. Grossman throws the pass and it's intercepted. Back down at the 49. Ah, come on. Smith goes in motion. Edwards makes the Leftwich zips it to the left sideline and here as they start off at their own 14-yard line. Grossman goes it to the left sideline. Peterson takes his fourth carry of the game and searches for a hole. No one in front of him. Number 81 catches the heater left sideline and is at the five. And he's in for the touchdown. Number 81 gets gigantic yards on this play, and the catch is just the opening act. Nice move, and he's off to the races. Not a player who typically has a TD on his stats, but he's a... <laughs> Leftwich throws a lob here, and it's caught at the... Taylor will get the carry on first down, and heads wide right. Finally drops. Leftwich throws a heater and the receiver. Brady. Edwards grabs the fast ball over the middle and he's in for the score. Byron Leftwich makes a terrific completion in double coverage here. Wow, now that is one confident QB. Great effort. To... And that'll do it for the first That's half the of this of one. Second. The Jaguars are out in front, 14 to 7. And now let's send you to Chris Berman in our studios in Bristol for the ESPN Halftime Report. Boomer, got this drive at their own 26-yard line. Terrell will be in completion. Yeah, he's struggling a bit there, but this may... Oh, and they will move the chain. On offense, it was always a plus to avoid third down all the time. Just like... Grossman fires this one over the middle, and it's caught. Of... Take what you can get, Dan, but they were, you know, hoping for more. Grossman rifles it out left side, and he connects at the 18, and touchdown! Marty Booker is going to make a great play right here. Snags the football and then really turns on the juice. That's his first touchdown of... 
Leftwich just rifles this one, and it's gone as the 30. Leftwich rifles it out left side, and it's not. Barry catches this one bit and shut it down. Good denial there. Second down coming up. Taylor gets the call on third down. Grossman throws this on a rope. He obviously didn't lose faith in him though, Dan, because he's kept throwing it his way. Gabe calls it in pretty much down the middle. He hasn't been working the sides too much. Well, he's obviously very covered. 300 yards for the day. Douglas. Taylor will get the carry on second down and Williams pulls it is the seventh play of the drive. Leftwich floats it to the right side and it's tipped. Incomplete. That will bring up fourth down. Grossman rifles it out left side and offensive plays from this squad. We sure have. We'll see if they can keep it up, though. Second down. The clock is stopped at 48. Rips him down. The Jaguars will take a timeout. Leftwich lofts this one out to the left and the ball's Second down. Second down. One man back. Leftwich zips it to the... Fourth down, and the field goal unit is on the field. Scobie kicks from 36 yards out, and, and he misses this one to the right. So that'll do it for regulation time. We're going to need overtime to decide a winner in this one. It's heads. Leftwich just rifles this one, and it's... Edwards catches the bullet up. Leftwich zips it to the left sideline. Taylor is at the 45. 40. Leftwich zings it to the right side, and the ball is... Leftwich unloads this to the right sideline and Smith catches the hard Scobie kicks from 36 yards out and they take the lead. Josh Scobie has no problem getting this one between the sticks for three. Oh, he was so close. He could have made that if he was wearing wooden clogs. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I have a feeling we'll never know for sure. And that is going to do it for this one. The Jaguars come out on top 17 to 14. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time. All right, gang, great work as always. And with that, we welcome everybody back to the ESPN studios for our ESPN video games post-game show. I'm Chris Berman. The Jaguars stepped it up for sure, putting up some good numbers. But now let's talk to a player who was instrumental in their dominant running game and is our player of the game. Fred Taylor is on the sidelines with Susie Culver. Susie? Thank you, Chris. You gave an outstanding effort, and you won a close game today. What was the key to your success? Our offense was really in rhythm tonight, moving the ball well and putting points on the board. They were having a tough time stopping us. We just executed, executed, and executed the way we needed to win this game. Back to you, Chris. This is I'm Chris Berman. Let's get straight to the action. 
In our first game this week, we had the 49ers walk away with a six-point victory. The Buccaneers won this contest, but will stay at the second place in the NFC South. We had an interesting free agency pickup of note here. Trey's got the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Chris. Let's switch gears and talk about players that will have new homes in the National Football League. As free agency continues to play such a huge role in determining a team's makeup, Antonio Freeman is on the move. Perhaps not for all that he thought he'd get, but a good deal nonetheless. Two years, $1.7 million. Todd Washington will also have a new address for a while as he signs a four-year contract with the Bengals. Warren Sapp played well despite the loss and showed us why he's ranked up at the top of the league. Bears, Jaguars. Fred Taylor got the carry here. Once he found a lane, he was gone. The Jaguars go on to win this by the final score of 17 to 14. Drew Bledsoe passed for 150 yards plus and helped his Bills beat the Browns. Up in historical New England, we had the Patriots get sent home with a 14 point loss. Up at Invesco Field at Mile High, we had the Broncos get nipped by three points. Seahawks, Vikings. Sean Alexander wants to get his team inside field goal range. Gets the handoff at the 42. Oh, he may do more than that. He shakes two. He could go all the way. Touchdown. The Seahawks win this one by the final score of 32 to 14. We had a big trade also of note here. Trey's got the lowdown for us. Trey? We'll shift gears now just a little and have a look at a few trades that should certainly be of interest. This guy leaves the Seahawks and is on his way to the Panthers. And they obviously see that as one of the areas that needs improvement. In exchange, they'll get someone to beef up their roster. Steven Davis will step into a role that might suit him perfectly as he'll look to make an impact out of the backfield. The Saints erupted for 400 plus offensive yards in their victory at Texas Stadium. The Chiefs won on the road and will now head home to meet the Broncos. Lions, Packers. Robert Ferguson set to receive the kick. And it's a good kick. Gets it at his own eight yard line. Just wants some breathing room for the offense. Makes a move there. Oh, what a crack back block at the 40. What a move at the other 40. This is picture perfect. He could go all the way for a 90. Two-yard score. The Packers win this one by the final score of 34 to 21. The Rams won this contest, but will stay at the second place in the NFC West. In a long-standing NFC rivalry, we had the Redskins pick up their eighth win of the year. Travis Taylor stepped it up this week and gave his team some added firepower for the win. Jets, Steelers. Chad Pennington calls signals at the 12-yard line. He's so dangerous, buying time. Moves out of the pocket, fires, touchdown. The Jets go on to win this by the final score of 31 to 28. We had a big injury in this one, and Trey has the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Chris, thanks. In front of you, we've got the AFC Infirmary Report. And as you can see, they were hit hard this week. Will Shields won't see action for a while, so this offense is going to have to make do without it. It's a broken hand, and the doctors are saying he'll be out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. In front of you, we've got the NFC list. And as you can see, they could form their own mash unit. Corey Chavis will be on the sidelines for a while, so this defense will need to do some reshuffling in his absence. A broken shoulder will keep him out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. Now, on to even bigger news, as you may have already heard. Courtney Brown is done for the year as he'll watch the rest of the season from the sidelines. And they'll be scrambling now to find someone that can fill his shoes. Now the big story of the day. Alan Fanica will be on the sidelines for a while, and that is not good news for his club. So that'll do it for now. Boomer, back to you. And last but not least, we had the Colts come away victorious. All right, Chris, thanks. Time to check out our playoff races now as December is officially upon us. Let's start it out with a look at the AFC. Meanwhile, let's take a look at how things stand over in the NFC. So that's how we stand to this point. 
still lots of jockeying left to go as we get this thing sorted out for January. So that'll do it from here. Boomer, we send it back over to you. That'll do it here for Pivotal Week 14. Things ought to get very interesting over the next three weeks, huh? Before we go, my primetime players' game balls go out to a few gentlemen that are pushing their teams toward the playoffs. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studio. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.